Elizabeth, hello. Hi, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are. I have not been drinking. <laughs> You're Elizabeth. This is this is Jen from NorthCoastGardening.com, and friend of Rant. And do you know who I am? Do you recognize me? <laughs> Let's start over. No, no, we're actually not starting over. We're we're live. This is this okay. is uncut and uncensored. So I have I it's cocktail hour and I have a drink. And Great. There Bring is, it up. There is an English theme which we will get into as we go. But you all both mocked me. You mocked me. Oh, I didn't mock you. You both did because I said I if it's going to be English, I'm going to make something with pims. And you were both like, oh my god, how could you do pims? I mean, well, it does taste like it cough syrup. It does not taste like cough syrup. Pims <laughs> is gin with spices and citrus in it, and I am going to make Genevieve taste it straight, just to prove that it does not taste bad. Try that. It tastes kind of like a bitters. It, well, it is It is a bitter in the Italian sense of bitters. Um, if you've ever had a bad Pims cup, then I am going to venture to say that it was at a bar that put something vile like 7-Up in it, which is wrong. <laughs> that's how I've had it. That's why I'm that's, you. That's horrific. So, I, I, I came up with like a winterish, uh, and by the way, if you're in England, you can get winter pims, which has got more wintery kinds of spices. But I came up with a very nice way to serve pims at the holidays when you don't want people getting too drunk. You want to hand them a nice drink. You don't actually want everybody, you know. Okay. Crashing out on your couch. That would be bad. Crashing out on your couch. So a little tiny bit of pims. We're talking less than an ounce, and it's only 25%, so it's not that much. I'm guessing like, we're going to be adding something sparkling to this, or carbonated? Carbonated. So, nice sparkling apple cider. This is ordinary Martinelli's. Not not alcoholic cider. This is just, and so look, this is a lot of cider and a little pins. Can't even see the color of the pins anymore. Taste that. You can That's serve nice. that to a five-year-old. <laughs> exactly. If you served this to me, I'd be like, and when are the grown-ups going to get a drink? Yeah. They're actually really good, just the thank, way it is. Thank you. Thank you. That's, I was suspicious. I know you were. And so, and another, here's another variation. I like this a little better because it's just got a little more something going on. Is again, just a little bit of Pims, not even an ounce. Just a very small amount. And Weed's ginger beer. Grown up mm. and spicy. Which is not. I've had that. Yes, this is this is a this is not an alcoholic thing. So do you want to try this one too? Do you want to try the ginger one? I mean, I really, would love to. it's a minuscule amount of of pims, but it's tasty. It's a small. You, your your guests will feel like they've been given a drink unless they know better and they're like in the kitchen looking for the bourbon. Which it I actually would. tastes exotic. I'm, I would do it with oh, the yeah. ginger. I think the ginger beer is more interesting than the apple cider. The apple cider is surprisingly fresh. I think the apple cider would be nice if you're like having a bunch of greasy turkey and you want something to sort of cut it. And I forgot, I got these adorable little crab apples at the um, grocery store. They're totally oh, those are beautiful. So yeah. So a little half a crab apple in there. Oh, nice. It floats. I know. Oh, That's nice. Adorable. It's not really adding a lot of taste. It's just everyone can walk around because it's a champagne flute, so there's not a lot of room. So cheers. Cheers. Very nice. Uh, what, what are you drinking? Uh, so I'm gonna, but I'm gonna continue with the idea of the hot toddies because, like it or not, we are firmly in holiday season. Yes. So I think the hot drinks are kind of apropos right now. Right. And I'm gonna make this one really hot. I'm gonna add um, some fire, some actual fire to the mix. <laughs> <laughs> My husband is not home. <laughs> You'll be able to get away with this. Um. Okay. So what, well, I'll, I'll set this up first. This is um, Charles Dickens Rum Punch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Which is, it's the traditional recipe. This is, this is he makes this in most of the novels, particularly David Copperfield. Um, you see a lot of rum punch being made. Um, and you just, it's kind of, it's very similar to what I did last time. You're supposed to use dark rum and brandy. I have light rum. <laughs> it's what I had. And um, I'm using that American honey instead of the brandy. Okay. That'll cover for it. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, that adds a lot of character. And then you, you mix that with brown sugar and lemon zest and okay. melt that together over a very low flame. All right. And then in another pot, you have lemon juice and water. All right. All right. 
So exact proportions on the website. Yeah, exactly. And so the first thing you do is set your booze. Now this is a hundred percent booze in here. So okay. scan back. Oh, no! <laughs> here comes the flame. I can't believe she's doing this. Oh, I'm so. I think you can even see it in the light. You oh, can. Whoa. Oh my God. Wow. All right. Now the way to get it out, blowing on it does not work. That just makes it, it likes that. Cut off its oxygen. Remember this. Cut off it. Now, see, now it's really going good. Now it's wow. going. Please, please put that out. <laughs> well, now I'm so happy I don't even want to put it out. Okay. Yeah, you then you pour the lemon mixture in. All right. After you put the fire out, that's important to emphasize. I heard a little sizzle, too. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. And, uh... And then, I have this really kind of expensive crystal, uh -huh. but it's very heavy. And I think that stuff was made to resist a lot of, a lot of uh, punishment. Okay. Anyways, we're going to find out. Yeah. Oh, that's so Ooh. pretty. Look at that color. That does look nice. And do you garnish it with anything? I would expect you to have like a... a lemon peel, I think, would probably yeah. be good. So, the reason for our English theme shall now be revealed in that we have been sent a great number of English gardening tools, which we have been playing with all afternoon, including this rake, crazy rubber rake. It's got rubber tines. Rubber tines. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it does not make a lot of noise. Oh, I would love that. Can I know. And wait, wait for it, wait for it. It's got these little screws, so which we believe mean that you can put a new rubber thing in when this one wears out. There's actual tiny little bolts on there that you can just unscrew, and there's four of them. So, yeah. yes. So these See, I have brown cover, not grass, so that would be perfect for me. I know. Don't you wish you had one? I do. Why don't you? How do I get these sent to me? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Cl Clarendon Forge sent them to us, and this is like a... This whole thing is one piece of metal from here all the way up to here, and then it's got this big piece of ash. I mean, these are supposed to be like, didn't you say, like, tools that you pass on to the next generation? That's what they're saying, that grandparents would pass down. I know. They're, oh, they're, the wood. The wood grain. and I mean, you don't see that in a tool, not in a gardening tool. I know. This is, like, very nice ash, and they're heavy, but in a good way, like in a way that helps the shovel go into the soil, not in a way that means that you're not going to want you're it. You're going to break yourself. You're going to break yourself, yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not really a tool geek at all. You know, I'll just use anything and throw it down and break it and use the next thing, but these are nice. You have to appreciate this. I mean, like, this handle, this is one piece of wood that they split and, and, and made hot or wet or something to yeah, they, they they like split it and then they made it wet so it was pliable and like shoved a bunch of metal like a, a big d-handled piece of metal in here and then they moistened the wood and like warmed it up so that it actually just stays in the shape now yeah That's, it's kind of crazy wow. it's like, see that kind of craft like how you'd make a boat so, so this is like hand hand craftsmanship yes and you can see the guys in the forge like online if you go to their website they've got like this video and the guys are like Chucking pieces of metal around, like this hot glowing metal, like boom, like 10 feet away into this huge box. And you can actually see that they, these have been like hammered upon by a real person. I mean, you get the sense that this didn't come out of a mold or something. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, it is for this reason that we are celebrating the English and their many contributions to um, our alcoholic um, traditions this holiday season. Well, we're celebrating. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Cheers. Cheers to Brandon. Cheers, girls. <laughs>